thanks everyone for joining us today again with another exciting episode of cloudnative.fm podcast. This is your host, Saim Sabdu, and today we are talking about chaos engineering in this episode number 26 in the cloudnative.fm podcast. What is chaos? A chaos engineering and what is litmus? So first, let me define what a litmus is. Litmus is a tool set to do cloud native chaos engineering. Litmus provide tool to orchestrate chaos on Kubernetes to help SREs find weaknesses in their deployments. SRE use Litmus to run chaos experiments initially in the staging environment and eventually in production to find bugs vulnerabilities, fixing the weaknesses leads to increased resilience of the system. Litmus take a cloud-native approach to create, manage and monitor chaos and chaos is orchestrated using the following Kubernetes custom resource definitions or CRDs, chaos engine, chaos experiments and chaos result. And let's stay to our my guest, and I'm really excited for today's my guest. His name is Uma Mokora. He's a co-founder and co-creator of co-creator of Litmus Chaos CNCF project. Let's go ahead and straight to the interview. Thank you everyone for joining us today and everyone is right now is looking as your eyes on because with the background we show you we are already are all set for the KubeCon 2021 in this time LA and today I'm really happy that I am joined by Uma Mokora. He is a co-founder of the Chaos Native and also we have want to understand from him of what is the the rise of litmus chaos everybody is talking about chaos engineering and today it's my player that is joining me on the call and hopefully we we'll learn a lot from him over to you omar can you introduce yourself to my audience where you live what you're uh, what you currently do or are you ready for the kubecon this year yes thank you Simon, for having me here on your show i am Uma mukara co-creator of uh, the Litmus Chaos CNCF project. I uh, currently live I currently uh, live in Bangalore. Uh, most of my team right now is here because of all the COVID situation. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about uh, what's happening in, um, in the space uh, of uh, chaos engineering at the moment. Uh, we really started about uh, three and a half years ago uh, when we were trying to um, chaos test some of the cloud native applications. Then uh, we realized, uh, you know, there was uh, not a great tool to do chaos engineering in cloud native way. That was really the beginning of uh, Litmus. And uh, I'm happy to talk more about uh, Litmus, how we started and what we're doing here uh, at the moment right now. Yes, absolutely. And for the first question on my side is how long is Litmus in, into the this cloud native space and uh, how how long has been in the CNCF landscape? Um, we originally started writing back in 2017. Uh, we started announcing and uh, giving it to community on in the month of May in one of the KubeCons, Europe KubeCons in 2018. So um, as an open source project, uh, it's been more than three years. And uh, on the landscape, I think, you know, it's been there on uh, three years now. But as a CNCF project, uh, it's a little bit more than one year uh, around mid uh, 2020, we donated the project to um, CNCF is a sandbox project. Uh, it's been a, quite a good run uh, since then. Yes, absolutely. So for the first question from my side is that 
there is so much happening I mean, because you started that with you started this revolution around in 2017 and during that period of time kubernetes is gaining popularity and gaining momentum and service meshes concept already into the market and then people are talking about the kit of seeing some of the proxy ingress controller and Kubernetes into the market. What gives you this idea of the chaos engineering for the Kubernetes? Because I, I just I, I just started the journey from the laptop to up till now, how it's all things happening your, your, during your mind period, because there is so many things to do in Kubernetes. And you started thinking about this chaos stuff in Kubernetes. That concept really surprises me a lot. Yeah, I mean, if I think back, I'm also a bit surprised um, on how it all happened, uh, the journey has been. Um, it was really around a need for chaos testing another project. I was also a co-creator uh, of another open source project, uh, which is in CNCF called Open EBS. And uh, I was trying to um, improve the reliability of uh, our own SaaS platform, which was having Open EBS as the underlying storage engine. Um, and that entire uh, platform was built on Kubernetes. So I was looking um, to improve the reliability of overall SaaS platform and OpenEBS. And uh, I was new to chaos engineering. I tried to use some tools. I was not happy and uh, let me write uh, a simple tool for my own use. And uh, we did that in about uh, three to uh, six months in usage. We felt good. Let's actually open source this as well. And um, it was picked up by community with uh, a lot of enthusiasm. A lot of people from the community started giving feedback, what more they would like to see in Litmus. So I built a larger team uh, around um, Litmus and we started building um, progressively towards um, a good foundation. We introduced Chaos Operator, we wanted to have GitOps as a way to scale chaos engineering. Uh, we wanted multiple teams uh, and people, multiple people in the team to collaborate around chaos experiments. So, you know, it's it's been really the community that was uh, telling us on what we wanted to see. And uh, since last um, 18 months or so, uh, there is a lot of uh, interest that we are seeing on the chaos engineering side. Uh, from cloud native community. Um, that's probably because Kubernetes is moving uh, into large scale adoption and they are seeing a need for um, how to ensure the reliability of cloud native applications, how to validate the service level objects around the services that are built uh, out of uh, cloud native. So we are happy uh, to be um, you know, seeing this traction and this is one of the reasons uh, I actually started building um, a more commercial services around uh, Litmus as well. Uh, Litmus was started as an open source project uh, in my data. And, and now I'm um, uh, leading Chaos Native and we are offering enterprise uh, solutions around Litmus as well. Yes, absolutely. And you talk about the open EPS is another storage solution in the cloud native landscape. So I've been tracking around, but it's a wonderful story that you started your journey from there and then realized we need a tool that can, can do some kind of tier of stuff. And you can, we, we, can, we can understand how resilient our infrastructure is and how resilient our apps are. So that's a wonderful story. So what are the first, uh, when you first uh, uh, brought about the code and thinking process behind that, what are the initial features of Litmus and the chaos engineering was then? So in, I think it started back in 2017 when you talk about yeah. that time. As I said, you know, the initial days, we didn't want to write a framework. We wanted to chaos test something. So uh, in the first three months, there were a bunch of uh, Ansible scripts uh, we were trying to put together on how to bring down uh, a Kubernetes pod or a Kubernetes service or how to introduce the CPU hog. Uh, into a container, um, all that stuff. And uh, then we wanted to give a name uh, internally, we named it as Litmus. 
and uh, we started writing it as a Kubernetes job, uh, right? And um, uh, I think uh, about uh, a year into um, the development of this chaos tool, uh, we realized that um, you know there is there is a big bigger need um, that is uh, around reliability, and uh, we could give this to a community and uh, build. Um, a larger infrastructure or framework uh, around chaos engineering through Litmus in open. So that's when we first started writing a chaos operator, um, right? And uh, uh, we wanted chaos experiments to be managed well. So we uh, started defining uh, custom resources around um, Litmus, uh, right? So we uh, defined around four custom resources and a chaos operator, and uh, they were all uh, loosely coupled. Um, they need to be implemented uh, in a particular way, uh, which was probably not the easiest, but it is uh, simplest if, if you read the documentation. And that's how uh, um, the early days of uh, Litmus looked like. And then as people started looking at, uh, we saw that uh, Chaos experiments are good. Um, Chaos Hub was a good concept. At the same time, um, teams wanted uh, chaos scenarios and nobody wants to just delete a pod, but rather uh, they wanted to use it um, in a particular scenario, multiple experiments need to be uh, put together, all that. Then we started defining um, Litmus workflows and uh, to scale, we started using GitOps and we also put um, uh, certain capabilities around observability of chaos experiments. Um, so all things together, uh, we are now seeing uh, a feature complete platform you know, for chaos, doing chaos engineering on Litmus. Yes, absolutely. Because right now we see, listen, we see the Litmus to do.o is a GitOps enable. You have the Orgo project CD, Orgo project you can using these kind of stuff. That's a wonderful news for me because I'm being the fan of the GitOps approach, GitOps principle, GitOps practices. But when you started about, you started about just delivering a one job in Kubernetes, a tear down just pod and realizes that pod is when break up and then it's scheduled in another pod, how it's operate. And that's, it's complete a workflow right now. Is it because yeah. you, uh, applications are now deployment in wrap in a deployment, the ingress controllers, then the services, and there's so much, then the service meshes, and there is so much things come up. So during that in during that period of time, and as the litmus evolved and the first rotor operator, how much what are the requirements you get from the audience that what we want to do this, we, we need this kind of stuff. Uh, can you help me out? What are the initial requirements of the customers or the community and what they want you to do in these kind of scenarios? Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a certain evangelization that has been happening around uh, Litmus uh, by us, by other projects, by other companies, vendors, all that. So it is not that uh, the requirements very were very, very clear. Some of uh, them were deduced by research, but community was mainly coming and uh, using uh, Litmus. They were uh, giving us feedback around what more experiments uh, could be useful to them and uh, what more tunables were probably required uh, to um to uh, do chaos uh, experimentation and uh, one another thing that was purely born out of uh, requirements from community was the ability to run um, litmus uh, or litmus experiments within a namespace alone right uh, we realized that uh, kubernetes is being used uh, in a multi-tenant way uh, in many um, instances, right? Um, a bunch of uh, developers uh, or users are using one single Kubernetes cluster and uh, they just own the namespaces, a uh, few of them. And you wanted to be able to run chaos engineering within that, right? So we added the multi-tenant capability of Hitmus 
purely based on the need that came from community. But uh, we are fortunate to have a lot of uh, uh, great contributors um, in writing uh, new issues, in telling what's uh, not there, what is needed, et cetera. The other one also is uh, early on, um, there were few uh, enthusiasts, uh, early users of uh, Litmus who gave us clear need for having a strong observability mechanism. Right, chaos engineering is not just about uh, faults injection. You also need to be able to um, see what's going on uh, when a fault was introduced. Was it because of a fault that it introduced? I see some dip in uh, the performance, or uh, is it naturally happening? And uh, you need to be able to put in the context of chaos onto your existing observability systems. So we define chaos um, and metrics, and uh, you can push them into uh, Prometheus uh, right now, for example. So these are some of the features uh, that um, uh, that were uh, enabled primarily because of uh, community feedback. Yes, absolutely. So well, another question for myself, because is it right now the project is, as you guess, three years old right now. But in a very short amount of time, the litmus and the chaos engineering gained more so much popularity. It was you think if it was you predictable during your tool you, tool you created, or it when when this popularity gained it up. What your initial thought was? Because in a, in a three years amount of time and the amount of adoption grows every month, everybody now contributing to the litmus side of things. So do you predict about the popularity, how it's growing up in yep. the world? Or what's your initial thought was after looking at the popularity of the chaos engineering right now? Um, no, certainly there was uh, some amount of uh, um, passion that uh, we created because of uh, the incoming request and uh, how chaos engineering itself uh, is being taken. Um, but primarily, uh, we were saying chaos engineering is being used not only by SREs, but also by Kubernetes developers and Kubernetes quality engineering teams and uh, Kubernetes teams that are responsible for doing Kubernetes upgrades. So uh, the concept of chaos engineering, if you look back three years ago, it was primarily for ops, right, uh, for SREs. Uh, that is uh, still true, uh, SREs need chaos engineering, but it is not just uh, SREs that require chaos engineering in cloud native space. Developers and QA uh, teams can uh, use. Um, one of the reasons is uh, in your cloud native stack, there are so many moving pieces, right? And uh, these pieces are coming fast. Put together, uh, you need a way to uh, ensure there is reliability if something goes wrong somewhere, right? So you need uh, to start doing chaos engineering in uh, uh, pipelines, right? And we are seeing a more than off of the use of Litmus today is uh, in the pipelines, right? And uh, also in um, production, we cannot get all the metrics, uh, right? And they're all uh, within data center or private environments, or they may have disabled the call home metrics. But we are good. We are seeing good amount of um, usage uh, in pipelines, and that's one of the reasons for the popularity as well. Yes, absolutely. Because moving pieces, people are now think is not just for operators. It can scale out on the multiple pieces. Even can developer can chaos their own experiments on the pod level or the deployment level to see the application resiliency and infrastructure infrastructure resiliency as well. But I'm really happy about the whole project, the whole ecosystem. But as, as, I, as, I, I, as I learned from the CNCF ecosystem, that the chaos engineering, like they have some kind of supply chain security and then other, other mechanism like the policy engines, then we have the ingress controllers and the service machine, the kit offs they are all originating and evolving the community. Do you see in the moving pieces, the chaos engineering itself has become an ecosystem and more and more tools are becoming the part of the litmus or the chaos native team and more and the more operators coming up into this space. What is going to be happen next uh, in, uh, after a few years, 
how you predict yeah. this chaos engineering landscape? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, my prediction is that chaos engineering is going to be a common requirement for cloud native uh, uh, environment, right? So, you, you, you need um, for which you can use litmus. So, uh, in the last couple of years, we wanted to make sure of two things. One is there is a feature completeness in terms of the framework and you have a reasonable coverage on the experiments for uh, Kubernetes resources, right? And the next step is really uh, to help create more experiments around cloud native applications, cloud native stacks, and go to the, go and try to integrate with uh, uh, other CNCF stacks, right? Uh, as I said, uh, service mesh um, uh, projects uh, can make use of Litmus. So there is going to be a uh, reasonable work uh, in the coming year and later on. And I see uh, as Litmus move into the, you know, uh, the other stages of uh, CNCF uh, project maturity, like incubation and graduation, uh, there are going to be more and more integration of uh, Litmus with other projects and everything will come together. Um, and that's how it will happen in, in the CNCF ecosystem, right? And we are also looking at working with community uh, users uh, to drive more um, commonality of uh, the usage. Uh, so we have a work group um, already that is working on at a CNCF level and uh, there are more things to come through that. Yes, absolutely. So let's circle back the discussion on the another topics. We talk about the CNCF ecosystem. So how the chaos engineering with the litmus project you are working on, or you do have this kind of insight, you can, people can use your tool to test out the cloud infrastructure like Azure, GKE, AA, Amazon Web Services, or already these tools already have. Do, do you want to integrate your litmus tool to these already pre-built solutions? How was yeah. is how how you are looking at this this cloud adoption landscape? Sure. Again, great question. Uh, litmus is a Kubernetes or cloud native application. That means you know it runs on uh, runs uh, within uh, Kubernetes, right? It can be uh, it it has a very small footprint. But it doesn't mean that you can do chaos engineering only on Kubernetes using Litmus, right? It runs on Kubernetes, but you can uh, target any environment, including other cloud platforms. Uh, we do have support for AWS, Azure, GCP already. And uh, you, you can test uh, VMware, for example. You can also test um, uh, physical uh, load balancers and bare metal uh, servers using IPMI and uh, more and more infrastructure related, uh, non-Kubernetes infrastructure related experiments uh, are being requested and there are going to be more uh, contributions around that area. But this is one of the features that we did make sure uh, it is there in 2.0 that um, you can target non-Kubernetes environments, including cloud platforms from Litmus. Yes, absolutely. And another, another question that I see from the community is that uh, right now I see the GitOps uh, enable infrastructure support with the Litmus. But what I can see is that uh, people are looking at somebody because the GitOps is entirely things you not just putting the code into the repository, but you're putting the infrastructure into the repository. And then it syncs your code and check out the declarative and uh, you know, the desired state of the infrastructure. So do the litmus is looking at this landscape is preactively because the GitOps is right now is everyone is focused. So what do you think? Yeah. What is litmus is currently is missing in this kind of lens in the GitOps model? What is next feature coming up into particularly the new suit set of parameters? So what is currently missing and what is in the plan with the litmus yeah. scale? I mean, uh, we released uh, GitOps integration uh, very recently. Uh, we always track um, what's happening in the cloud native ecosystem and uh, what are the new features that are being introduced. So we will keep upgrading uh, the feature set to match with that. 
but uh, there is not uh, there is nothing like you know something is missing today uh, how gitops work uh, in litmus is we uh, look for a change to a deployment or any other kubernetes resources and gitops end result is make a change to a deployment because the configuration is updated and we listen on that right so if you make any change uh, on kubernetes uh, cluster and we are listening on to that change and then we start uh, we trigger a chaos experiment so it's an event driven um, chaos and it works uh, well with uh, gitops uh, sorry uh, argo cd and flux cd we have tested well and um, as long as there is a change that is delivered to your deployment and we are watching it, uh, it runs um, the chaos experiments in an automated way. So this design will, um, will remain valid for quite some time uh, unless uh, um, there is a fundamental design change in the GitOps tools, which I don't think will happen. So we are, we are good, but uh, we'll keep listening to the community requests and we're also seeing um, this feature is just being taken uh, by Litmus users. So we are uh, right now focused on making sure that all features of Litmus 2.0 are used. And uh, you know there are multiple um, feedback items that are coming in, in terms of small enhancements, uh, maybe some areas, bugs. So maybe another six months, we will continue to focus on stabilizing uh, and adding the missing pieces into the overall Litmus uh, 2.0 feature set, right? So 2.1 just released a few days ago and uh, 2.2 till 2.6, uh, we may see uh, just getting uh, this, uh, you know, moment from 1.x to 2.x uh, happening. Yes, absolutely. That's a wonderful news for me because people are talking about these kind of things. So we talk about the litmus integrate, the chaos in integration with the CNCF landscape, the cloud provider, the kit of small brother the service. And we to discuss about all like all that kind of thing. So next question that's originally came up in my mind. Let's say some developers who are developing their app, how the litmus can help their development life cycle to be more efficient or more easily they protect the breaking changes when these developers ship their code into the production. How Litmus is helping developers? Um, this is the best question uh, you know, so far, uh, Sam. Uh, thank you for thinking through that. That's definitely our uh, vision as well, right? So uh, the first step is to uh, create an infrastructure to create experiments, you know, put them into a proper place and uh, how do you, uh, you know, orchestrate them? How do you use them among the teams? And uh, how do you automatically run upon a change that is GitOps, right? And how do you run them in pipelines? And uh, the next step, uh, probably, you know, it's not there in our immediate roadmap, as I said, to rot, uh, zero uh, changes need to go in. But uh, we are having, uh, as a litmus uh, project, uh, our persona is all DevOps, right? Not just SREs, right? Uh, we are right now concentrating, how can you use it in QA uh, test beds and pipelines? And for developers, uh, things are a bit manual right now, uh, but we are going to have uh, a more and more uh, features uh, developed around it. And uh, uh, on the Chaos Native side, uh, we just launched uh, Chaos Native Litmus Cloud, and uh, it's going to have a developer friendly uh, features uh, to to provide exactly the kind of flow that you just uh, uh, just explained right and um, litmus users uh, can connect to litmus cloud um, uh, and there is a free tier there but um, there are going to be more developer friendly tools uh, on the cloud um, and also on the open source project uh, which uh, they need to host it on their data centers. Developers generally require things on SaaS, right? Um, they're used to uh, writing an YAML file and uh, write a script and everything gets run somewhere else. And that's the kind of experience we are looking at uh, bringing uh, with Litmus as well. It, it could be six months, it could be one year, yeah. 
that's a wonderful that's the best news for me because what i will start in my case as a developer and i want to see when my code is tested out i want to put them in a some in a tested environment or some kind of a sandbox environment where i test it out and turn tear that out and see the whole life cycle is happening there so that's a wonderful approach so i believe litmus is taking every step they taking as the angle of the DevOps, the SREs, and the CNCF ecosystem, the cloud adoption of the AWS, GCDKE, VMware, to everyone looking at. That's a very wonderful, wonderful news for me. So now the personal question for you, before we, we, we wrap up the discussion. So how you started your career in the IT? How long been you to the IT? Can you tell about us to my audience about your own personal experience of being in the IT? How to transition your current career from the different phases? Yeah, I mean, I started my career after I finished my engineering as a developer, I think about 24 years ago, right? And uh, I was uh, a security developer doing IPsec, VPN, all that stuff. But I, I kind of uh, uh, developed my interest into building products, uh, product management. So I worked as a um, product manager for quite some time and uh, that's where I developed further interest to build something uh, on my own and um, I think it's as an ent entrepreneur it's been more than 10 years now and um, I, I, I keep seeing there are a lot of changes in the way software is developed and uh, um, people are not hesitant to try out nowadays. So it's a good news for um, people who are building new things because there's a good ecosystem on uh, trying out uh, things um, on by the enterprises as well. So that's that's been the career. I'm looking forward to building Litmus into a very, very uh, large uh, tool with the community help and uh, bring some difference into the way uh, software is tested, right? And uh, if you can look at reliability, uh, as a part of uh, software development, uh, then things become easier, right? Um, and uh, Litmus uh, is supposedly solving uh, that very requirement uh, in the years to come. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm predicting that because if I think you are the person who are, who are going through the different phases of software development life cycle and you are now focusing on this particular tool because people who are are shifting from dev to ops stages to the security rules. They can understand the importance of chaos engineering and these kind of mindset to be established in the organization. So that's, thank you very much. So another question from my side is how, in, how you look at the open source, how your experience to be in the open source, what, what do you think, what's make it, what, what's it make it difficult and what's make it better What's your opinion to be on the open source? Um, I myself started uh, coming into open source uh, completely about six years ago. So I was um, a bit afraid, skeptical. Can I really do it? So uh, I think being associated with the community of uh, CNCF has made everything easy, right? Um, everybody is uh, trying to come and be associated with CNCF community, Kubernetes, uh, Slack, CNCF Slack, the TOC, the programs there. Um, so there's a good understanding among users all around the world now that, uh, you know, in the technology space, CNCF um, ecosystem is the right thing to do. And uh, it's fairly uh, a comfortable process uh, if you want to build a new uh, project and community around that uh, with the CNCF, uh, right? So as long as you're building something that users need, um, the actual uh, procedure and the process are already available for you. So thanks to CNCF, I didn't have to do a lot uh, as a person to, you know, uh, popularize, you know, in the technology space, CNCF um, ecosystem is the right thing to do. And uh, it's fairly uh, a comfortable process uh, if you want to build a new uh, project and community around that uh, with the CNCF, uh, right? So as long as you're building something that users need, um, the actual uh, procedure and the process are already available for you. So thanks to CNCF, I didn't have to do a lot 
uh, as a person to you know uh, popularize myself and then the project so we just wrote uh, our writing the code that is required by our users yes absolutely uh, users are already there in cloud native so the community Yes, absolutely. And that's a wonderful, I think it is open source is right now the target of everyone because the open source and you have a wider ecosystem that give you the feedback and then feedback is really important for any open source project. That's a thank you very much for elaborating. So I'll wrap up the discussion. The last question from my side, what's, what is the most excited part of your whole journey into the litmus chaos, what is the most excited part? And then can you share the, what is the most challenging part as well during that whole life, during that whole period? Yeah, I think the most exciting part is enterprise users. Uh, one day uh, I received uh, a Slack message that, hey, you know, we've been using litmus. Uh, for three months and uh, just wanted to let you know and uh, do you offer uh, commercial support um, i didn't know that such a big organization was uh, using litma so you know that was probably the best uh, day um, most challenging you know i'm still trying to figure out how can i read the minds of people who are using litmus uh, within uh, the private data centers, right? So if they come to um, our uh, community, then we are learning, but uh, otherwise uh, there is no easy way uh, to know how uh, Litmus is being used or what are the needs. Um, so we are, we are thinking about uh, some ways of uh, building cloud native um, chaos engineering communities so that you know uh, you you can welcome them they can share their success stories or uh, you know issues so that's just the beginning uh, we started building that community recently but that's still a challenge uh, we'll see how it goes yes absolutely thank you very much Uma it's been a wonderful talking to you I learned you started it this uh, chaos stuff from the open EBS and then you starting thinking about that this is now, now not just a need for one project but it's a need for the millions other projects the CNCF ecosystem and the cloud levels and the, the development level to the SREs team to the DevOps team and the team who take care of very seriously how the infrastructure are resilient or not but it's a wonderful talking to you learn so many great amount and information about and it's been a, a great appreciation for your project it's been a very popular right now it's vibrant community people are talking about everyday chaos engineering people are appreciated your project that's the wonderful things i think every open source project gets is, is from the appreciation from the wider ecosystem the vibrant, vibrant community so thank you very much Uma. hope to talk to you again mike on the open ebs side how you started this there because open ebs is a is a project where i have next eyes on but today i learned a wonderful information from you and thumbs up for your project thumbs up for your next coming up features on the litmus and in, i hope you enjoy talking with me thank you everyone who showed up for this podcast talk to you again and Make sure to tune into the uh, Uma stock on KubeCon that I think is listed in the YouTube chat channel. You can grab the link and watch this KubeCon talk that Uma is uh, giving you this 2021 LA, KubeCon LA, and hope you enjoy that as well. So make sure to tune in for the next another episode in the future. Bye-bye, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.